the truth of D4. The way it actually is. This could change the world. Let's talk about how I honestly feel in Diablo 4. Okay. I've gotten to level 82. I have basically completed my renown at this point. I have got all nice. the altars of Lilith. Uh, obviously beat the campaign and all of them in world tier four. My gear is looking nice. pretty stout. I don't nice. really know what left I could really farm at this point other than experience and do the pinnacle boss and, you know, like a few other uh, uh, things at the moment. A farm, God knows, too many legendaries. Done a, a bunch lot, of PvP. yeah. You can see I got some ears in here too. I've been doing PvP and played with friends. I've also been playing solo. So I've had a pretty good amount of experience uh, and this is coming from essentially the full experience very cool very interesting from a druid's perspective now i have seen a, a lot of feedback that's sad, related though. to this game both extremely positive as well as extremely negative True. and i have yet to find too much of good nuanced conversation about around the good and the bad you know what i have not uh, seen anyone talk about about the casual diablo 4 experience while leveling and how good the story is I have not seen a single person even mention that. At around this game, I'm gonna do my very best to ride that line fairly. So let's talk about the good first and what I like about the game. I think the game people say is overwhelmingly complicated, but I actually That's think it's fairly true. decently simple. I think the skill tree isn't too confusing. It looks very- Skill trees are simple. Crafting is simple. In this game, in Path of Excel, it just takes a little bit of a while until you learn it. The complexity does not exist in skill trees and crafting, if anyone's wondering. It just doesn't. Very confusing at the beginning, but legitimately all of these are linear. So this isn't something where you really have to worry about matching things too much. I think the Paragon board looks very confusing until you still... It's not. Or, until you actually try using it. Yep. And then you realize, it, yes, it's still a little bit confusing, but it's not really as bad as it seems. If you can under, understand 90 degree angles and turning things, you can basically understand <laughs> Paragon board once you actually get your hands on it. Just looking at it, it looks very confusing. The way items work, the way legendaries work, the, not way, confusing work, at all. the way you acquire these all seem decently well explained. Though, and I will say there are some things, for instance, like aspects having different tiers, for instance, the uh, ancestral and the sacred being different colors and literally named different offensive aspect of the raging. This is an ancestral legendary, but this one is Ooh. a sacred legendary and having didn't even know that absolute basically uh, no difference in terms of what these items actually do, I think can also be extremely confusing as well. For instance, I have very often seen people say things like ancestral legendary aspects are better than normal. See how this one goes one to five seconds and is a maximum row of five seconds. But then this is a normal legendary ring that goes one to five seconds as well. It just says three there in the- I think that's just from what it was extracted, I think, but it makes no sense to make it like that so yeah a, a, a bit strange as someone explained what does injured enemy actually mean in diablo uh for and turns out that's below 90 percent hp but above uh 30 percent hp or something like that which is insanity the reason people don't even realize it goes all the way to five seconds is because they have their tool tips off. Oh. So, and this is by default. So they have their advanced <laughs> tool tips off by default. Shout out to Woody Joe actually for informing me about this because yeah. I didn't know this originally. And then they see it says three seconds here as well. And they think that one's lower than my aspect that's five. So ancestral is yeah, but it's And not so there's true. a lot of misinformation and confusion coming from a large amounts of uh, players in the game and that can get spread. So I do think there are some things that are fairly poorly explained in the game. However, once you understand the fundamental of the mechanic it becomes significantly more enjoyable i do think there is something to be said for the world's size i feel like the actual size of the world the fact that these these legion events which by the way you can farm free horse cosmetic from here that's like a ghost horse really cool i think that the actual size hmm. of the map is significant when i'm teleporting around the different areas i do feel the variety in terms of what the landscape looks like I that is true even though there are some uh big downsides to this honestly because the desert area looks like the desert area we have experienced in Diablo 2, Diablo 3. You know, a lot of these assets are very, very much reused from Diablo 3. So a lot of them don't actually feel new. Like the thing that probably feels the newest is, is the swamp area. And that's pretty much it. But yeah, 
the Blizzard is very poor at designing actually cool looking areas. In World of Warcraft, they oversaturate areas, so you know it's like a literal spastic child's dream. And in Diablo, they make uh, make areas. You know, it, they don't feel unique. The desert is always the same desert. You know what I'm saying? The swamp is always the same swamp. You know, there's literally no change. It's just a different scenery, but there's no real change. You know, for example, Lost Ark. Lost Ark does an amazing job at making areas feel different and unique, at least for the most part. I do think it is fair to say that with a lot of people, I have the feedback I have read is that people were surprised that so many of the minions look alike. This true. is true. It is a Diablo game. Hell is running over, and a lot of the demons are twins, apparently. So I do believe that there's something to be said for that. I don't know how you. That is so true. This this is like the new world problem with the game releases, and look at that. There's three different enemy varieties. Wow. Wow. You fix that within the ARPG hack and slash genre, to be fair, but I do understand that criticism, and I accept that. Now, in terms of. The early, mid, and late game, I would like to get into that feedback as well. I mm -hmm. think the early game is the most exciting. You're pushing through the story. What you're trying to do is fairly well explained. You're trying to do the yellow stories. They are very easily true, marked. True, there true, is true. good story dialogue. There is very good... I don't know about the story dialogue. I'm going to disagree for this slightly, but man, a lot of the story dialogue is so poorly done. And I think it's... Almost not AI generated, but AI done. Because this is how a lot of the story feels for me when the character is talking. Lilith is the evil one. We need to chase her. Yeah, eh, the pauses between sentences are just, ju just so bad. Half of the dialogue could be 30% to 50% probably less and would sound absolutely better. But no. It's just, it, 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 it's just, the pauses are just insane. The voice acting, this is Blizzard after all, so there's also very good cutscenes. Me personally, I found some yeah. of the boss fights to be w way better than some of the other boss fights. I'll put it that way in also order to keep through. the spoilers free. However, I have heard mixed reviews on the boss fights, so I will take that one under advisement as this is just my own personal opinion. I think it is not clear upon immediately playing the game, what to do after the campaign. And I actually believe this is a good Is thing. it not? I think the fact that it does not immediately tell you, go oh. and farm nightmare dungeons, go and max your renown, but instead you get the sense of the world has opened up to you. I actually enjoy that a good oh, deal. That's I'm an old school RuneScape player. I played RuneScape since 2001 when it came out from Devious Mud. I'm actually older than I look, to be honest with you guys. So for that reason, I very much enjoy open world. Is he 40 or something? I'm kind of scared. World, I do not like hand holding. I like games that give me a character and I feel like I am brutally trying to survive within the elements around me and figure out what's going on in the game. So I like that. The only thing I True, don't like same. is terrible trashy UIs and bad quality of life. I would True. say the UIs could be improved. I'm not calling them trashy. Dude, he's... <laughs> Look at those gems. Why are they here? I don't know. Saying those are things I don't like. There is aspects of that I don't like. I would say right now, having one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven Obviously. gem slots all slotted up with gems is extremely annoying. Having no gem bag is yes. extremely annoying. And having inventory space, uh, you guys saw already my... Uh, let me walk over here and show you. You guys already saw my storage stash. And having a storage stash that is completely full with legendaries is very annoying. You might think, okay, this what sounds like suffering some success. Oh, DM. You got Why? Th yeah, I knew he's going to show this because, yeah, this is an obvious problem. Why can't they have, like, you know, some kind of place you go, you literally just plump the legendary in and extract something. And, you know, you have charges for how many reapplies of the extraction you can get. And then it's a random roll. That would be such a good system. And this and this stuff obviously cluttering up. Like they knew that these systems are gonna be bad. Whoever designed this knew that these systems are gonna be just bad. You got so many legendaries, you know, fuck you. But that's not what I'm saying. I cannot not pick these up if I want yep. to. These are forced to be picked up to me. Unfortunately, I'm gonna turn the alerts off so I'm gonna keep spamming. Uh, unfortunately here, 
uh, these are forced for me to uh, acquire. The reason mm -hmm. is, is if a legendary drops in the field and I do not want that legendary and I leave the dungeon, when I go to my stash, that legendary shows up right here. And it gives me two options. I can either put in my inventory or I can put in the stash. Does not give me an auto salvage ability. Does not give me anything like that. Also, this- Wait, I had no idea about that, by the way. Wow, so I'm picking up legendaries for no reason? Stash has no way That's for insane. me to filter or search through, basically through. forcing me to go and hit the sort button in order to make them sort by type and then look through all the chest plates, etc., until I find one I want. So very often yep. what I find myself doing is not wanting to look through 3,000 different items to find min max rows from these tiny little texts that my eyes are bur blurring from playing the game 24 hours a day yep. anyway. So instead I'm just crunching everything and not giving a fuck. So I think that that is probably some poor gameplay design in terms yep. of the stash and the UI with these items. Now, that is going to be probably my primary negative feedback. There is one other point I would ah, like to make, which is the dungeons. There are a lot of them. You are not required itself. to clear all of them, but there well, are... That's amazing. Wait a minute. Oh, strange. I thought I, I thought it's charged. Well, turns out it's probably not. Well, ain't that amazing. Are plenty of codexes here I have already done, as you can see, and there are plenty more still left to acquire. I do like the variety of having the legendary aspects at a minimum row. I think that's smart. So there is still a way and a reason to farm normal legendaries and not just use codex for everything. But this also makes certain builds more viable early and allows certain types of players to be able to build certain types of classes early. I don't know. I'm playing a necromancer. There's uh, the blood surge is the only thing that honestly makes sense or mattered. And even with that, you can easily just skip it. Nothing else was kind of build defining. I know for other classes, there's like huge build defining things, but for a necro, yeah, there's kind of nothing. Honestly. Earlier than otherwise would have been possible with just pure RNG of getting the legendary items. This is almost like sort of being able to craft legendaries or set items from Diablo 3. This is the way of guaranteeing certain items. I think this was probably a necessity to keep players encouraged because of the difficulty of the game. Now, speaking of the difficulty of the game, I've seen mixed opinions. I've seen people speaking that the game plays very slow, that the game plays very hard, it is very brutal, and I enjoy that is what people will say. Then I will see people that say this is way too easy. I'm blasting through everything. I got to in game in two days, and I don't. Yeah, my necro is not uh, not the fastest at clearing or anything, but man, nothing can kill me. Pre-immune to most things, honestly. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do now. So my addressing to these points is, really I have multiple points to this, but I'm gonna start with the most obvious, which is that players like me who are planning 24 hours a day in order to actually either make content creation on this or learn the entire game before the casual player in order to explain things to the casual player for the sake of media like YouTube views and Twitch mm -hmm. growth, etc. We are not the standard players and should not True. be balanced around. The game should be balanced around the casual dad who... Oh my god, he actually said it. I love you. I have been saying this so much. If if someone like Zazarian says something about the game that something that should be changed, it probably should be instantaneously thrown out the door instantly because the these people that do YouTube, that do Twitch by streaming and playing these games constantly, do not represent almost any real opinions. You know, their their opinions only matter when it comes to like, you know, sorting things in the tab, you know, quality of life features, but not actual game game features. Quality of life, yeah, sure, let's hear what you have to say. But their opinions on what should be changed in the game are absolutely wild and out of place. Because they're complaining about running out of content in like the third day, while the average player is still doing Act 5. Th that's the brutal reality. Those people should literally be never listened upon. If you hear Quinn say something, ignore it. If you say, if you hear Zizarian say something about the game, ignore it. Asmongold, anyone, any single big YouTuber who is gonna tell you, well, this is what I don't like about Patrick Shell in game and blah blah blah. Chances are their opinions are literally counted what you actually want. Chances are if the developers do the opposite of what they say you they should do, 
that you are going to be the winner as the average player. Comes home after a long day of work. He has kids that are yelling. He wants to sit down with his one beer a day and play for two hours. Yeah. I think that that is the or a monster energy drinking, you know. Suck it. <laughs> America! Target audience because this is now Diablo. The majority of the people playing this are in 30 to 45 age bracket. They're old school gamers that True. enjoy the game very much. And they do not have 24 hours a day to play this game. True. So I do believe... That while I agree, it is possible for people like me to get to the point of now all I'm doing is essentially grinding the same thing over and over again very quickly. I do not believe that should be in the conversation. Also, by the way, you may look at him and he has level 80. Dude, but that's a lot. It honestly takes such a long time to get level ups after 50. If you are specifically not like grinding the almost optimal millions of experiences per over dungeons and blah, blah, blah doing... If you're playing casually, if you're just like, you know what? I want to do blue quests. Yeah, I want to finish all blue quests in the game. Don't care about the Lil uh, Lilith statues. Just going to do blue quests. Yeah, it's going to take you literally three hours probably to get level fi uh, 51 from 50. If you play the game like that. So yeah. Getting a level 82, uh, probably every level is going to roughly take a normal person like at least two hours to get. Or maybe three hours even. Depending on what they play obviously and what they do and whatnot. But yeah, it's not going to be fast. Getting 99 is probably not... Probably the average person is not going to get level 90 maybe even. Admittedly too, uh, too early to say just yet, but there's a shot. Station ...in terms of overall complete balance. I think very often the casual average game player, because I know there's hardcore community in these games, I understand, I myself am one. Again, I play RuneScape, takes the most hours of any game to max, okay? That's just true. Mm. I understand that there is audience for these things. Well, to be fair, I'm gonna defend him a little bit on this. He is Canadian. It's like, what is, what he is, what, what will he do unless he plays RuneScape? Like, he doesn't exactly have a lot of options. He can stay in his probably log cabin or he can get go out and get eaten by a polar bear yeah i also would honestly pick runescape out of desperation it is what it is also it's actually a really good game jokes aside yeah but the vast majority of players are not the one percent like maybe you the viewer who is a a very good long-term pc hardcore gamer that is oh by the way if you're watching a video like his or this one uh, yeah, you're probably above average. Uh, you're all also you also are most likely not the exact average player because you care about the content, you care about what's happening, and blah blah blah. That already elevates you. Maybe not hugely above average, but 100% above average. A small percentage of the players, and the most players are probably never even going to hit level 82. I don't think the majority of players are going to farm all 180 or something altars of Lilith that I farmed in order I just will, to get though. the plus two strength on each you know type of one of these. I don't see okay. that happening, <clears throat> nor do I see the average player going into the Paragon board and spending 15 hours of their day while they drink their one beer to be able to figure this out. I do think what we will see is a vast majority of those casual players looking up a couple guides, a couple of tips and tricks. I yeah, myself maybe. have seen those search terms coming through. I know you guys are looking for them. Figuring out the game on that level and then playing through a pre-planned build. I think that's going to be a lot of players. However, in my personal mind, this would be a mistake. And the reason I say this is this game is actually, I think, very well suited for that casual type of player. I think the world tiers seeing that there's only four of them, meaning every time you go from a world tier, it feels like a significant accomplishment. When you start in world tier one, and then you bump up to world tier two, if you're not, and again, if you're min-maxing, you should start in world tier one, as it is going to be faster, and you will blast through it faster, so you can get to tier three faster, and you skip to its entirety. But if you are the average user, you will start in maybe one, I think, this is too easy. By the way, <clears throat> by the way, it makes completely no sense because this is adventure, aka literal beginner, never played Diablo or anything like that. 
And Brawl Tier 2 is veteran instantly? Yeah, doesn't make sense, huh? Or maybe you just don't want to blast through things. You go the two, and then each and every minion is going to feel like its own challenge, and that might actually be something that you enjoy personally. I also think that the discoverability of this game is insane. I think when you walk around the world and you discover these different dungeons, the different player players that you'll see, the different events that will happen. You'll notice the codexes that will have rewards in them. Yeah. Even quests that are sort of hidden, like for instance, I have some areas I haven't even uncovered yet and I've been True. playing the whole time. I think that is a fantastic addition to a Diablo game. I have played Diablo 3 significantly and in my time playing Diablo 3, I felt like every single map was basically a linear path. It is me walking down a sidewalk True. to get somewhere. Whereas in this, I actually do feel like I'm on a map. I'm on a a. Unless when you go into the dungeon and there's like two uh, two ways you can go, but the reality it's a loop. <laughs> when you uncover that, it's kind of a little bit meh. Landmass. I'm oh, on funny. a area, a state, whatever you want to call it. I'm I'm in a world. Is what it actually feels like. That is a step up in terms of environment, which I think is heavily important for the average player. I think that's heavily important to feel like you're within an actual world. I think this is doubled down by the fact that when you're walking around on the map, you'll also very much experience unique type of monsters. So they'll have like a star that will show up and have a unique monster and also the side quests, which are crucially important. Oh, so that's the star. I had no idea what the star meant on the mini map. Got it. And by the way, for min-maxers for Renown, you'll want to do these blue quests. Don't sleep on them. It's a mistake I made. I also believe that these side quests... Uh, blue quests do sometimes reward with Paragon, I think. I don't know. Uh, I'm currently playing the game. I'm, th uh, I'm doing blue quests. I'm ignoring everything else. The blue quests kind of actually take you all over the map, the game, all the zones. So, it's kind of cool. I like it. It's interesting. And I do think, you know, completing it sometimes does reward you with, uh, you know, Paragon levels. ...do a good job at getting you to areas that you don't normally go. Like, you tell me what's right here other than Altar of Lilith that's down there. There's nothing here. So in order to get you there, they got a side quest to get you there to experience that. I also think the fact that after you beat the campaign, you can make a new character, skip the campaign, and start in multiple different regions is actually a very great quality of life for people that play through the game, beat the campaign, and then just want to try a new class because they're not trying to go to level 100 and min-max no. class. Level 100 takes a very long time. The experience leveling in this game is very different than some of the previous games. And so Diablo for that too, reason, like, I think this was also a good addition. I also want to mention that I'm seeing a lot of people get very angry about balance changes. I myself did sort of a half-hearted meme video on the Druid balance changes. I was kind of joking around, but at the most part, I thought Druid legitimately, uh, I was surprised with the nerfs. Even people like me who are complaining about nerfs to classes for the end game, my opinion, while it may matter, does not matter as much as balancing the game around the average user and what they experience. And I think that that average... Also, by the way, I will say, I, I, I forgot to mention this, but the average user experience is questionable. I got, I got a couple of people commenting that they are playing the game very casually, but they, like, get close to the end game and they, they because of some very, very minor mistakes that they have done... You know, how they build themselves, what kind of, you know, what they prioritize. That they can actually be in quite a bad situation when it's time to bump up the world tier. And if you want to bump up the world tier, well, if you can bump up it, uh, that's kind of bad. But yeah, there are, uh, there are some noob traps, it seems like, in this game. You know, that people do it and turns out it's, oh, that's completely the not right thing to do, huh? Average user the changes were probably for the best. I think trying to make sure that some classes are are not so complete outliers, that every single person feels like if you don't play this class, you're just stupid. I hate it in games when I join a game and everyone's like, you're playing that class? What a loser. I hate that personally. I Yo, I have not seen anyone talk in this game. The chat is literally as bad and as bad and can be at this point. Like. I, I did a world boss. I'm like, I'm asking people, hey, is there maybe an altar of Lilith nearby that I can grab while we're waiting like three minutes? Nothing. No, no one talks. No matter what you do, what you say, no one talks. It's insane. I think I really enjoy 
uh, being able to feel like I identify with my character, which this game does very well. When I'm playing Druid, I wanted to play Druid because I wanted the shapeshift. A furry. Okay, got it. I, 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 I see what you mean. Identify. Persona. I wanted to be a bear, mostly. That was like 90% of my reason. There I also we go. wanted to be a wolf. That was the other 10%. I there got we go. what I wanted. It happens to be the class is actually... How about the peacock? Uh, how how about the spiderkin? How about the scaly dragonborn, huh? How about that? Quite good. And that both of those builds... By the way, Stormwolf actually seems like it has some... I have all of the uniques now for the druid. I will do a video on this, but Stormwolf seems like it has something coming. I have some footage of this. So, in my own opinion... Where I'm going with this, and you're probably seeing me... The ability that calls down a storm by way for Druid, this looks so amazing, not gonna lie. I mentioned quite often is, this game is probably a 7 out of 10 for min-maxers, maybe a 6 out of 10. For people that want to grind through, blast 100 and all that, I find those people, the conversations I'm having with those players, are getting bored quicker than they expected. However... For the average gamer, the 30 to 45 year old dad who has a couple hours a day, I'm finding them enjoying the game Eight even more nine. than they expected. So yeah. there's a yin yang balance. I think they sacrifice some of the focus on this hardcore community in order to engage a little bit more of the average old school gamer who maybe doesn't have as much ability to be that hardcore gamer that they fell in love with gaming in the beginning. I think this is a fine sacrifice because while you might yep. think that focusing on the hardcore community that's just doubling down, playing the games all the time, is their core fan base and they should appeal to these people, the reality is the core uh, fan that's base... That's a stupid fan base to appeal to. They, the, the hardcore fan base for any game is delusional at best. Is that dad who no longer has the ability, or that mom, okay, I'm not trying to do a gender thing, that doesn't have that ability anymore to play the games that they love and they desire because life happened. And I think Diablo 4 does actually a pretty good job at reestablishing this type of game into immediately being enjoyable for those types of players. So they might feel left behind in terms of levels, but they don't feel left behind in terms of loving the game. That's what I have found personally from talking to players. It's what I have experienced with my own gameplay and the stands true the reason Makes for me. Sense. I did find the in game come sooner than I imagined. However, I found myself getting the in game to be more enjoyable than I thought. And I have since up They literally now need to concentrate on some 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 kind of PoE style of gameplay with mopping and whatnot. And that and that's it. That, that's literally it. Easy rating solution. My rating from a 7 out of 10 for myself personally. This has nothing to do with the previous ratings I just mentioned. But for myself, on the betas, I rated it a 7 out of 10. I thought that was very fair. I have since upgraded it to an 8 out of 10. I will say I have one other harsh criticism other than the filtering and stash issues with the items and the no search feature issues and the gym bag issues. There's one other thing, which is that dungeons were supposed to be fixed. They're not supposed to be kind of backtracking. I feel like I... like. Putting it, if you have a line where you have to go this way, then back, then this way, but you take that line, you make it a circle where you have to go around, it's still the same <laughs> distance, and that's effective. I told you, I told you, it's delusion, illusion of choice. You, you got you got two branches, right? You can go the here or here. Well, the reality is it's actually a circle. That's, that's the thing. And, you know, sellers are all literally the same. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Effectively what happens, so I feel like I am still running the same amount of distance as I expected to with backtracking. I also find that the- Swamp dungeons also have like only two types of entrances. All of them are the exact same. Dungeons themselves do lack a little bit of variety, but they put a billion goddamn dungeons in this game. So they repeat some of the bosses. Those are really my only complaints. Other than that, I think this game, if you're the person who- My complaint is, and by the way, again, I am also a ridiculous one percenter of, of games like this, is the fact that there is no difficulty in the game. I wanted Lost Ark type of bosses, you know? That's what I wanted. When I did uh, the... Death Reincarnated or whatever that bo of world boss is, it was so bad. It's like, no attacks hit you. It was almost impossible to get yeeted. It was just so... It, it was such a letdown. Like, the, the, uh, the, the experience of bosses is just, they're, they're so easy. They're literally just too easy. Loved gaming growing up and has since lost the ability to play games 12 hours a day, like people like me that have no life other than video gaming. 
I think this game was designed for you. That's what I think. Nice. You know, I think there's a lot, well, a lot of conversation around the other side of the community, the hardcore, bam, the, niche, the, the small DM group. Diablo you know, what, I'm in that group, but I don't think it was designed for me. I think this game was designed. That's good. Well, anyway, that's the video. Pretty good, not gonna lie. Good game. I'm gonna probably go play it now, honestly. I got a lot more than blue quests to do. I have only done, like, what, one-third of all blue quests in the game currently? Not a lot. A lot more to do. Anyway, this is Squizzer Citizen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.